Hello and welcome back to ASX Options. This is Jonathan speaking. Hey, so if you like this video, please go ahead and give this a like. We're a new channel. Um, we're looking for subscribers that are going to enjoy our content. Um, so please, yeah, go ahead and hit that like button. So today we're going to be talking about option types. So there's two types. There's a call and a put. And we're going to talk about what both of those are and what they mean. So first off, what is a option call? That is the right, but not the obligation, to buy, okay? Buy the underlying at a specified price at time in the future. Okay. Okay, so, so what does that mean? That means at some point in the future, you can decide whether you want to buy the underlying for the agreed price at a time in the future. So let's draw a diagram to that. Let's draw a diagram. Okay. So let's pretend this is time on the x-axis there and on the y-axis okay we're going to make that the stock price s so let's pretend that we have a stock price right now at forty dollars Okay, so $40 per share. So, this is now. Let's say that in one year's time, we would like to buy an option that gives us the right to buy the underlying at $40. So if we draw a line out here, okay, so in one year we'd be able to buy for forty dollars but during that time the stock price could take on any number of values okay and they all have different kind of probabilities but we'll get more into that later so the stock price one scenario is called could follow this path and land up here at sixty dollars okay but another path is that it comes down here and it lands at $30. So, if we have the right to buy in one year's time and the price lands at $60, then we've just made $20 worth of profit. Whereas in this scenario, if you exercised, you'd make minus $10. But in this scenario, we probably don't want to be buying the underlying for more than it's worth. We could just go and purchase the shares for $30. So, a put is very, very similar. A put put option is the right to sell at a given price at a given point in the future. So the right to sell at price at time in the future. Okay, let's get rid of all this stuff here. So let's draw a graph of that. Unlike in the other example, now if the stock price goes below the level, then we're going to make a profit. So again, if the stock price starts off at 40, okay, and then in one year's time, it ends up being 
then we've just made $10. So if the stock price goes down to 30, we still have the right to sell for $40. Okay, so we've made a $10 gain. But again, there is a probability that it could go up as well. And let's say that it settles at $50, you'd make negative $10. However, again, you would not want to sell for, <laughs> for $40. Okay, if you owned stock, you could then sell in the market for $50. So under this option, you were under no obligation to sell for the price of $50. So these are just diagrams to represent how, how they settle and kind of, you know, what can happen between there. The stock price could go anywhere. You know, it could go all the way down to zero and it could go, to, go all the way up to any possible real value. But, you know, they, you have to have kind of a reasonable expectation. And we'll talk about what kind of probabilities lie around this $40 in later tutorials. So now we've talked about what an option call is, so the right to buy, and what a put option is, the right to sell. So now maybe we should talk about the confusing part, which is buying and selling these options. Because we've just said that a put is there's something to sell and then a call something to buy. That's the product definition. That's very different to trading in terms of buying and selling. So let's, let's firm up on our definitions. So, trade, we'll call this, buying and selling. Okay, so, Essentially, there's only two things that you can ever do when you're trading, okay? To open a trade. And those two options are, you can buy first, which is the most traditional for most people going long, or you can sell. sell first. So you can buy the stock or you could sell the stock or you could buy the option or you could sell the option. So then if you buy, you have a open position which is long. So you're long or you're for the stock, you're positive, you're bullish, you think that the position is going to increase in value. And your whole aim is that you're going to sell later and close the trade out for a profit or what you hope will be a profit. So this is kind of like the life cycle of all possible trades and you can only ever buy or sell. So if you then sell first, you've opened a short position. which means that you hope that the value of something, this underlying, is going down, whether it's the stock or a put or, you know, a futures contract, whatever it may be, you've shorted it. So you've opened a short position and you aim to buy this product back later, right, to close out your position for a, product, for a profit. So again, there's only two things you can do. One is to buy first, open a long position, and you sell later, hopefully for a profit. And this is going to close your trade. Or you can sell first, open the short position, and buy back later. So now, how does that relate back to up here? So it's a little bit confusing, but let's try and put that in perspective. So... Let's try and do it like this. Buy, sell. So you should think every time you go to the marketplace, there is always going to be a buyer and a seller. Right? You can't buy something without someone wanting to offer it to you. So let's talk about a call first. 
So, if we want to purchase a call, someone has to offer it up. So if we buy a call option, what does that give us the right to? That gives us exactly what we've set up here. That gives us the right to buy the underlying at price at a time in the future. Okay, so we're hoping that the underlying S, right, that this stock price S over time goes up. And we're hoping that whatever strike price, and we'll get into that later, is below the final stock price at the end. Whereas the person who's just sold that call to us, okay, the person who sold the call is hoping that they don't need to pay off, pay out on this position. So in this scenario, for them, they would be paying you the difference between this K and the final stock price. Okay, so S minus K. So if this was $40 and this was $60, they would be paying you 20. So let's talk about what a put looks like. So a put, the person who's bought hopes that the price decreases in value. Okay, because it's the option for the buyer, they have the option to sell at a future point. So they want the price of something to go down. So let's say that the strike is 40 and they want the price to go under 40. So let's say that it settles at $30. Okay. The person who sold the put, who's given the person the right to sell at $40 in the future. Okay. Ooh, what happened there? they are going to have to pay out $10. Okay. Now, I want you to remember, I've just given the positive scenario that the buyer is going to profit on both of these trades, but just the opposite could happen. Here, this, this stock price could actually go down, okay, which means that the buyer would lose money but the seller wouldn't have to pay out on the option. So then the seller would become best off. And in, again, in this example, if the stock price had rose for this put example, then the buyer of the put doesn't want to sell if the price is $50, but he's, he's got a price for $40. So he doesn't want to sell at $50 if he can go into the market and sell at 50 However, the person who sold that put option to him doesn't need to pay out on the put option. So technically then, you know, the seller wins. So there are a whole range of possibilities. We don't know where the stock's going to end up. Could go up, down, point is we don't know. But again, there is, there is kind of some kind of certainty that we can say, you know, if the stock price is $10, what's the probability that it's going to be $1,000 in one year's time? probably pretty unlikely. But there is a fractional probability there and we will get into what that distribution looks like. So just to reiterate, we've talked about what an option, a call option is, and that's the right to buy the underlying at a price at a time in the future. Okay, so if the stock price goes up, that's good for the buyer and bad for the seller. If the stock price goes down, that's good for the that's bad for the buyer of the option, but good for the seller. So for the put option, this is the right to sell at a price at a time in the future. So it's good for the buyer of the put option if the stock price goes down, but bad for the seller. And again, this vice versa, 
it's bad for the buyer if the stock price goes up and good for the seller. Remember to open a trade, you first have to either buy or sell. Okay, so if you buy first, you open a long position, you're hoping that the stock, the underlying, whatever the product may be, goes up in value and you're going to sell later to close out the trade. Otherwise, you could sell first, betting that the product's going to go down in value, you've opened a short position and you can buy back later. And again, here's just a schematic sh showing the buying scenario of a call. You buy the product, you buy the right to either buy in the case of a call or sell in the case of a put at a future date. Now the seller is just giving away this optionality and what they receive is the premium. And we're gonna talk about that in further videos. So thanks again, guys, for listening to ASX Options. Please, if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more of this content, give us a like and please subscribe. See you in the next video.